Bottom line, though, I guess, Senator, is it ever appropriate to make campaign content at military graves? He didn't take campaign photos there. These families, Gold Star families, whose children died because of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's incompetence, invited him to the cemetery. And they asked him to take those photos. Because as they told me yesterday, when I spoke to Kelly Barnett and Darren Hoover, the parents of Taylor Hoover, who has Arkansas ties, they don't get to go to the beach on Labor Day. They don't get to have barbecues. This is their one chance to have a memory of their children to commemorate their service and to honor their sacrifice. They wanted President Trump there. They wanted to take those photos. You know who the families also invited? Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Where were they? Joe Biden was sitting at a beach. Kamala Harris was sitting at her mansion in Washington, D.C. She was four miles away, 10 minutes. She could have gone to the cemetery and, and honored the sacrifice of those young men and women. But she hasn't. She never has spoken to them or taken a meeting with them. Well, it's they because they of did her, meet with them during the Dignified it's Transfer. Because of they her, were with them at the Dignified Transfer. Her and, her and Joe Biden's incompetence, that those 13 Americans were killed in Afghanistan. Oh, boy. In trouble now, huh? In trouble now. You just can't make this up. And now you on the back walk. Yeah, buddy. Kristen Welker, y'all. NBC. Oh, y'all. Fake news. They don't know what they're talking about. Biased. Nothing but hatred. Trump deranged. You know. And I mean, Trump derangement syndrome, TDS stage four. And now you got to walk back, huh? Check this out, you guys. You just can't make this stuff up like, 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 we, like we've been saying for the longest now. You know, they don't even know what's going on, you know, but are, are, are quick to say anything live on air, you know, when it comes to Trump. When it comes to backing up. Uh, this the, uh, uh, Biden and 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 and, and, a, and a so-called vice president. You know, you know, 80, 81 million votes. <laughs> yeah, puppets. When it comes to backing up the puppets, huh? NB, NBC, ABC, CNN, MSNBC. Yeah. All right, let me read this out loud for y'all. I got to read it out loud before we get into the video. On our broadcast this morning, we incorrectly implied that both President Biden and Vice President Harris attended the dignified transfer of 13 American service members killed during the Afghanistan withdrawal. Biden was in attendance, but Harris was not. Whoa! You just can't make this up, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we know uh, uh, she, we, yeah, a so-called vice president. What a job she's done. But she wants a promotion. She wants a promotion, man. But again, enemy of the people. Fake news. They don't know, they don't know what they're talking about. Bias reporting, you know. You just can't make this stuff up, man. Everything we talk about, it, it's right here, you know. But again, when it comes to Trump... They're so quick to, to shut it down. But Tom, Tom stood his ground, though. I love it. So we're going to jump into this, this full interview. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I love you guys, man. One love to the human race, baby. We are kicking the show off right today, man. And it's fun to get good. Let's jump in. Now, as I'm recording this, you, might, you guys might see this video in a couple hours. But um, an hour ago, Christian Walker, she was, she was trending to be fired. And everybody was just going crazy, um, saying what a disgrace. She should be ashamed of herself. Um, she needs to be fired. Um, after this whole thing is going on, man, and the, the Gold Star families, uh, everybody's pissed, man. And their videos um, responding to Kamala Harris after she, you know, tweeted that ridiculous tweet, man, and, and called this, this uh, tr they called Trump showing up a publicity stunt. You know, and it was just very disrespectful in that in that post she made, you know, and um, pissed everybody off, even the, the Gold Star families, man. So I'm um, not looking too good, y'all, for her, not looking too good for her campaign. And um, you just can't make this up. But um, Tom Cotton joins uh, Meet the Press with uh, Kristen Roker and um, it went down on M NBC, NBC. So let's go and jump in, you guys. I'm not going to waste no more time. 
Um, and hey, we just launched uh, the channel memberships. I know everybody's been asking for it. A couple of y'all we've seen, and um, I want it to be special and put you guys those on the channel memberships a priority. And um, when you join, there's a lot of things you can see, a lot of perks, and um, you also get uh, up to six free mega hats for you and your family. Um, all the sent to me, you know. So make sure you, if you want to be a, a channel membership, it's on the uh, page. You can join anytime, cancel anytime, and um, it's a blessing. And I I want it to be to where everybody can be a part of it. I don't want to do like different levels and be trying to charge people crazy amounts because y'all know I don't care about any money, man. You know, we are in a fight to get our country back. You know, and I want to keep it real as as real as it can get with you guys. And if I get a chance to be a blessing in anybody's life, man, y'all know we take full advantage. We take the opportunity, man. But um, a lot of amazing perks that you get. And uh, we also send out free mega hats. We've already sent out thousands of uh, hats already. So um, but for anybody that didn't get one, you will, you will definitely get one. But hey, let's go and jump in, man. Brother Cotton. And I tell you, Cotton, he been, hey, that brother been standing. He been standing tall and strong lately. I ain't going to lie to you. He ain't been taking no BS from anybody. I'm Cotton of Arkansas. Senator Cotton, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thank you, Christian, for having me on. Thank you so much for being here. Let's start with this devastating news, the discovery of six bodies, hostages, including Israeli, American, Hirsch, Goldberg, Poland. Everyone, I think, feels heartbroken this morning, the entire nation and, frankly, world mourning these deaths. What is your reaction, Senator, and what do you think this will mean for hostage negotiations? Well, it's terribly sad news that Hamas murdered, executed these six hostages in cold blood, apparently shot them in the head shortly before they might have been rescued by Israeli defense forces. Um, my heart goes out to all the families, especially Hirsch Goldberg, Poland's family, our fellow American. There are other fellow Americans still to be accounted for. But I think it, we should note that, note that these hostages were discovered in the tunnels under Rafah. That's where Joe Biden and Kamala Harris put pressure on Israel not to enter for months, used an arms embargo to try to keep them from entering. Kamala Harris even said that Israel shouldn't enter Rafah because she had studied the maps. What the Biden-Harris administration should have done from the beginning is not pressure Israel to restrain its response, but let Israel win from the very outset. For 11 months, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have put more pressure on Israel than they put on Hamas and Iran and Iran's other terror proxies. And Senator, just to be clear, there, of course, is no arms embargo. It is true that the Biden administration did halt one uh, shipment of arms out of concern no, that's of civilian not, that's not casualties. Correct. No, Kristen, there, there that's is, not correct. It is correct. There's no there arms was, embargo. For, for weeks, for weeks, the Biden-Harris administration put an embargo, not just on large 2,000-pound bombs, which of course are needed to penetrate these deep and buried tunnels, but on things like tank rounds and artillery shells was, and mortar no, rounds. It was, yes. just one, it was just one shipment no, of arms. No, it was the 2,000-pound weapons large that you're talking about and 500 weapons. pounds. But it was a large having, category of weapons. Okay, but they have now moved forward with that. It's not an arms embargo, should, though, just to be very clear. That's a place, very specific it was in place, term, and it's not it an was arms in embargo. Place, it was in place for many weeks, okay. specifically to try to prevent Israel from entering Iraq, yeah, all. where these hostages were discovered. Yeah. If we had simply backed Israel yeah. to the hilt from October 7th, this war would probably be over. Mm. We probably would have found many more hostages alive, and there would have been fewer civilian casualties caused by Hamas's infliction of those civilian casualties on its own people. But at every turn, yep. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have put more pressure on Israel than they have on Iran and Hamas. And of course, they have... <laughs> Woo, boy. Hey, hey, it's getting a little hot in there, ain't it? It is getting a little hot in there, man, you know? But um, again, we have an incompetent leaders. You know, this leadership, you know, it, it's ridiculous. You know, a lot of things should have never taken place. A lot of things shouldn't be happening right now. But, you know, we have this leadership. And people are still clapping for these puppets once again um, this coming uh, election. Still clapping for puppets and failures, you know. But, boy, she got shut. She is getting shut. Uh, and again, we, man. I know NBCS, ABC, whatever this, whatever, you know, all the fake news, the enemy of the people, woke media, you know, I know they're, they're like, man, we, we might have to get her out of here. 
I tell you, because every Republican, every every everyone that goes up there, they just completely obliterate Christian. I, I'm telling you, I'm just being honest. You know, she gets obliterated. Because we're, we're not with the crap. We're not with the propaganda. We're not with the propaganda. We're not with the crap, Kristen. You know, people have died. People are sick and tired. And I tell you, we want our tax dollars back. I've also argued that the U.S. stands firmly behind Israel. Was one armed shipment? L let's talk about Prime Minister Netanyahu. No, Kristen, Netanyahu it, was, it was more than it was many more. Prime no, Minister Kristen, Netanyahu. you can do your fact check thing all you want. I'm going to tell you the real facts. No, it was a large category of weapons, okay. far beyond just 2,000 pound bombs. Okay, but the, the, you, but it wasn't an arms embargo. That, that's my only point. It wasn't specifically an arms embargo. Let's just move forward, though, in terms of what Prime Minister Netanyahu is facing right now. Because that's what they say. Let's let's just move forward. <laughs> Let, 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 let's just move forward. Come, please, let's not do this right now. Please, please, please. You're embarrassing me. Oh, oh, please, let's just move forward. You know, boy, I know she'd be crying at night, boy, when she go home. Because he's been facing pressure in the wake of this. He's been resistant to accepting this hostage deal. Axios's Barack Ravid reports that a senior Israeli official said, quote, we warned Netanyahu and the cabinet ministers about this exact scenario, but they wouldn't listen. Do you believe Prime Minister Netanyahu bears any responsibility for not getting a deal sooner? No, I believe Hamas bears responsibility for not turning these hostages back over to their families and surrendering. At, at every turn, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has tried, tried to meet the Biden administration halfway. They continue to move the goalposts. They continue to encourage and embolden Hamas. Consider what happened just a few weeks ago when the prime minister was here to speak at the Capitol. Kamala Harris didn't even sit behind him in a joint session of her Congress, one of her few duties as vice president. Then she came out after a private meeting with him and stressed that we need a ceasefire now, which is the de facto Hamas position. What did you have two days later? You had Israeli children being blown up on playgrounds because every time Joe Biden and Kamala Harris yeah. put more pressure on Israel, it simply emboldens Hamas and Hezbollah yeah. and Iran. Just to be very clear, though, there is pressure on Prime Minister Netanyahu. You have people protesting in the streets. He is, of course, the leader of Israel, and that's who I'm asking you about. Do you think, and would you urge him in this moment, Senator, to get a deal given these casualties. I would urge him to finish the job against Hamas, which is exactly what Kamala Harris and Joe Biden should have done from the very beginning. Again, if we had backed Israel to the hilt, if we hadn't continually put pressure on Israel to slow and to moderate its response, Hamas would have been broken and we would have gotten more of these hostages down alive. The only time Hamas has even come close to releasing hostages is when they are on the ropes. And of course, the U.S. has given more aid, both military and monetary, to Israel than any other country. But let's well, to be exact, on. they've given we've given hundreds of billions of dollars yeah. in relief to Iran. Let, well, let, well, some of that money, of course, is frozen. But let, let's let's move on to some domestic issues, uh, if we could. The issue of abortion front and center this week. Donald Trump has gone from calling himself throughout the arc. Uh, of time, very pro-choice at one point. He's more recently bragged about overturning Roe v. Wade. He now says he's going to vote to keep Florida's six-week abortion ban in place, a law he once described as terrible. How can people trust Trump on this issue when he keeps shifting his position? Well, the president's been very clear. He does not support a nationwide abortion law. In fact, there's only one candidate in this race who supports a nationwide abortion law. It's Kamala Harris. And we know what it is because the Senate proposed it and we voted on it. It is radical and extreme. It would require taxpayer funding of abortion up to the moment of birth. That's what she stands for. She's the only one in this race calling for a nationwide abortion law, something that is wildly unpopular. Just to be clear, the bill you're talking to requires that there be exceptions for health through the end of pregnancy, not that all abortions be legal in but all President, cases. But, but President me, Trump has said he supports exceptions yeah. when a woman's health is at risk, but, but, when, when she's been raped or been the victim of incest. Yep. And I the guess, vast majority of Americans support those as well. Exactly. But this law is radical. It would overturn 
50 years of precedent and require taxpayer funding for abortion, even in, in these cases. Well, re- taxpayer funding for abortions currently, of course, illegal under the Hyde Amendment. And just to be clear, abortions later in pregnancy, 21 weeks and after, are extremely rare. Well, if they're, so, if they're, so, if they're so rare... In if, the case of a health emergency. If they're so rare, why won't Kamala Harris say, then fine, we shouldn't allow them, with those exceptions. Because if of they're the concern so rare. for health emergencies. But if you have those exceptions... Me- Kristen, if you have those exceptions... It will account for those rare health emergencies. So why won't you say it? But that is what the law does. It says with ex- only, up to the time of viability, with exceptions, Kamala states Harris, are allowed to have exceptions if there are health emergencies. Kamala, me, Harris, voted, Kamala to, Harris voted against the, the Born Alive Victims Protection Act. She if, did not. If, if, yes, she did. Senator, I was she, there. Vote, she voted against. I was there. She yeah. voted against it. Kristen, if these cases are so rare she voted in the late term, advancing the bill if twice. she voted, if she vo- if these cases are so rare in late term pregnancy, then why won't she say, you know what, we should prohibit these with exceptions for the mother's life? Yeah. Why won't she say that? Because she, she is a radical on yeah. abortion. Just to be clear, she voted mm-hmm. against advancing the bill twice when she was senator. Yes. She's called it extreme. Let me ask you about something else. I interviewed J.D. Vance last week. He told me Donald Trump would veto a federal abortion ban if it came to his desk. Now Trump is not committing to that. Do you think he would sign that veto if it came to his desk? Well, Kristen, I think it's a hypothetical first off. We, we both know there's not going to be 60 votes in the Senate anytime soon for either party's preferred or centrist position on abortion, whether it's the radical position that Democrats have or the pro-life position that most Republicans have. So I think it's a hypothetical question. But President Trump has been consistent, is that there's not going to be a nationwide abortion law while he's president. He appointed three justices who reversed Roe v. Wade, which was wrongly decided, which even liberal scholars acknowledged was poorly reasoned, and returned this question to where it had rested for 170 years, which is the American people making choices through their elected representatives at their states. States are going to have different kinds of laws. Donald Trump has acknowledged that. I hear you're saying that uh, former President Trump has been consistent, but as we showed, he's actually uh, pivoted quite a bit on this issue. But J.D. Vance was very clear. He said that Donald Trump would veto a nationwide ban. And I guess the question is, why can't Trump be clear with people about where he, he stands? Are you he's, clear? He's, I know you're saying it's a hypothetical. Kristen, he, he has been clear, clear about that, what he that would do? He has been clear that there will not be a nationwide abortion law when he's president. He has been he has been perfectly consistent on that. Now, Kamala Harris, to her credit, she's been consistent and not tried to hide her radical position on abortion. It's the only position she hasn't tried to hide over the last six weeks, like her position on decriminalizing illegal immigration or banning gas-powered cars or banning fracking. Abortion is the one issue on which she hasn't tried to hide her position from the American people in this election. I'm going to talk to Congressman Rokan about all of that coming up, but let's stick with Donald Trump. His big announcement on IVF this week, he said Thursday he wants the government to pay for or force insurance companies to cover IVF. Is that something you would support, Senator? Well, all Republicans, to my knowledge, support IVF in the Congress, and there's no state that prohibits or regulates IVF in a way that makes it unaccessible. It is expensive for many couples. I understand that. So it's something I'm open to that most Republicans would be open to. I think we'd have to evaluate the fiscal impact, whether uh, the taxpayer can afford to pay for this, what it, if the impact it would have on premiums. But in principle, supporting couples who are trying to use IVF or other fertility treatments, I, I don't think is something that's controversial at all. Well, two months ago, you voted against a Senate bill that would have protected and expand IVF access, and it would have mandated that some coverage was covered by health insurance plans. If that bill came back to the floor, would you now support it? Is that what you you're mean, saying? You mean Chuck Schumer's ridiculous messaging bill? So no. That, re- so that, re- that requires I, fertility treatment for men who think they're women? But, but, that was slapped together in well, the summer, which you slapped together a, bill, a bunch of other it's bills? It's a bill that Chuck, also would have Chuck, protected Chuck, Chuck, and expanded Chuck, IDF. Chuck Schumer, has so been all summer, no. Chuck Schumer has been all summer long slapping together ridiculous bills that he thinks are going to help his liberal incumbent senators face off in their re Just very quickly. Hands behind your back, Chuck. Is he been sitting down with Nancy? I think he's been sitting down with Nancy. Breathing this walkie-talkie. Oh, you and Nancy have been drinking way too much. Uh, you, How much have y'all had to drink tonight? Hands behind your back. Hands behind your back. Do you know where this money would come from to cover IVF? Because in 2022, some $8 
billion dollars were paid by. Well, no, again, that's why I say we'd have to we'd have to evaluate any specific legislation. You wouldn't support taxpayer dollars. I'd have to evaluate any specific legislation as I would on any legislation. So you're still undecided on where you stand on this government-funded IVF plan. Well, I I certainly support couples having access to IVF, and it's not even a controversial issue in any of the 50 states. All right, let me ask you about another one of the big headlines this week: Donald Trump's visit to Arlington National Cemetery. Uh You've been talking about this. He attended a wreath-laying ceremony, obviously for the 13 service members who were killed during the U.S. withdrawal from Africa. We send our love again and condolences to the family and friends out there. Love to the Gold Star families. Love, thank you. Thank you for your service to all of our veterans on the channel. I love and condolences to all our fallen soldiers and heroes out there. There's a lot of veterans on the channel, man. A lot of people that have made the ultimate sacrifice. We love you. We thank you. Afghanistan. He was invited by those family members. Important to say that. Um, he also had campaign staffers with him. Photos, videos were posted um, on a campaign site. Taking campaign photos and videos at grave sites is forbidden under federal law. You, of course, served at Arlington Cemetery in the Old Guard, so I know that this is a sacred place for you. Bottom line, though, I guess, Senator, is it ever appropriate to make campaign content at military grave sites. He didn't take campaign photos there. These families, Gold Star families, whose children died because of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's incompetence, invited him to the cemetery. And they asked him to take those photos because, as they told me yesterday, when I spoke to Kelly Barnett and Darren Hoover, the parents of Taylor Hoover, who has Arkansas ties, they don't get to go to the beach on Labor Day. Mm-hmm. They don't get to have barbecues. This is their one chance to have a memory of their children to commemorate their service and to honor their sacrifice. They wanted President Trump there. They wanted to take those photos. You know who the family's also invited? Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Where were they? Joe Biden was sitting at a beach. Kamala Harris was sitting at her mansion in Washington, D.C. She mm-hmm. was four miles away, 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. She could have gone to the cemetery and, and honored the sacrifice of those young men and women, but she hasn't. She never has spoken to them or taken a meeting with them. Well, it's they, because they of did her, meet with them during the Dignified it's Transfer. Because of they her, were with them at the Dignified Transfer. Her and, her and Joe Biden's incompetence, those 13 Americans were killed in Afghanistan. Well, not everyone obviously was pleased with this visit. And again, just the, the last one in the room. You see how she's stumbling? Uh, uh, but, you know, you, uh, oh. Oh, Kristen. Man, I'm telling y'all, when they, I'm telling y'all, when these Republicans come on here, they just obliterator, man. Obliterator. No matter what you throw at them. And I don't understand how Joe Biden has went on five vacations in one week. I didn't, I didn't know it was possible. I didn't know it was possible to go on five vacations in a one week time span. That fella's curling his toes through the sand. You worked hard, didn't you, Joe? You worked hard, buddy. Yeah. Hmm. 81 million, 81 million. A cheap fake, a deep fake. Kamala said he's as sharp as a tack. Sharp as a tack. The law says memorial services and ceremonies at Army National Military Cemeteries will not include partisan political activities. And it didn't, Chris. He wasn't, President Trump wasn't wearing a red... It was posted on a campaign site, though. He wasn't wearing a red MAGA hat. I understand. He didn't have a Trump hat. It was posted on the the Trump TikTok. Just like Joe Biden has posted content of himself in the cemetery or in other cemeteries or a dignified transfer. They're all American citizens. They have a right to go there and to honor the sacrifice of those 13 Americans who Joe Biden and Kamala Harris sent to their death. Let me ask you about what we're hearing from another family. Uh, the family of Master Sergeant Andrew Marcasano. He was a Green Beret. Uh, His family was concerned that his grave was actually shown in a photo that was posted on social media. A statement from the Marcasano's sister, Michelle, said, quote, we hope that those visiting this sacred site understand that these were real people who sacrificed our freedom and that they are honored and respected accordingly. 
Did the Trump campaign fail to honor her wishes, their wishes? No, Kristen, they honored the wishes of the 13 families whose children died at Abbey Gate. Those families wanted the photos. They told me yesterday that they specifically asked President Trump for the photos. Obviously, headstones in Arlington are close to each other. And when you take but a photo of your what loved about the one, when you take a photo of your loved one, then other headstones are going to be present as well. Frankly, I think it's pretty disappointing that the she needs to. I, 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 she should. Like, she should be ashamed of herself, man. I didn't got my now, my now. My blood is boiling now, y'all. Now my my blood pressure then got up. She need to be, she, uh, she should be ashamed of herself, man. She need to be let go. You know, and, and, and it's sick how they try to take things and spin things, man. It is sick. You know? And I told y'all, Trump, if Trump does anything, if he says anything, if he walks down the street... You know, they try to make anything look bad. Anything look bad. Oh, Trump walked down the street. He was soliciting. You know. He was soliciting down the street. If he walks down the street, if he says anything, you know. His presidency has nothing to do with Project 2025. And guess what? They say Project 2025 every single day. But now you see CNN and other, they're, they're, they're starting to put the fact check out now. Like, no, no, it isn't, it, you know. Now they're getting fed up with it. But all these things, man, enemy of the people. Enemy of the people, man. And I'm glad that Tom is on here holding, holding, holding ground, man. You know, and she gets obliterated by every Republican that comes that comes comes on. President Trump for the photos. Obviously, headstones in Arlington are close to each other. And when you take but a photo of your what loved about the one, when you take a photo of your loved one, then other headstones are going to be present as well. Frankly, I think it's pretty disappointing that the New York Times went and found a family whose headstone was featured in that in that photograph of another Gold Star family, and then went to them to try to embarrass the Gold Star families who wanted President Trump. Very there. quickly, have you had any conversations mm. with former President Trump about joining his administration should he win? All we're talking about is making sure that he does win and that we elect Republican majorities in the Congress so we can begin to reverse some of the damage that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have caused. All right, Senator Tom Cotton, thank Simple. you so much for being here this morning on this thank Labor you. Day. I hope you get some time with family really. Whoa, boy, she, I'm telling y'all, man, I'm telling you. Let's read some of these comments. This report is nothing but a propagandist. Oh, man, the arrogance of these interviews is disgusting, man. Well done, Senator Cotton. Well done. Yes, indeed. This woman should be fired. She's just making things up. This woman is an absolutely dis a disgrace. You know. She is she is not asking questions. She is arguing with him. She's clearly an activist. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Cotton. Standing firm. Great job, Senator Cotton. Yes, every world well, again, everybody, uh, everybody with common sense. You know, the beautiful patriots with common sense, man. We all feel the we all feel the exact same way, man. Watching, you know, watching and, and, and taking in, you know interview interviews like this man but christian she she be, she should really be ashamed of herself man you know let me see what this says she is not interviewing senator cotton she is com uh, campaigning for K kamala cotton is amazingly calm and true self-control yeah and again same thing happened when jd vance um was on last week you know, when these Republicans come on, you know, they, they hand it to her. You know. But enemy of the people, man. Enemy of the people. Fake news. Bias reporting. Hatred. Nothing new, man. Nothing new. 
And then they try always try to hit, hit them with the gotcha, 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 gotcha. No. <laughs> you know? She should really be ashamed of herself, man. An absolute disgrace. But let me know what y'all think of all that, man. Comment down below. We are wishing the best in all you guys' life, man. And again, we just set up the memberships on the channel. Just one level. Um, so if you want to join, join. Um, and we're going to continue to be a blessing to all you guys, man. Anybody we can put a smile on, on their face, man, and keep it real, too. We're going to continue to continue to keep this thing rocking and rolling, man. Nothing but the truth. Nothing but keeping it real and common sense, man. You know, we are in a fight to get our country back. We are against the corrupt system, man. You know, prayers for Trump and his family. Prayers for the Trump campaign, the Trump team, you know. They are against the, we're not against the candidate, as you can see. We are against the machine. A machine. Everything you've seen take place, man. It's been one, one of a year, I tell you. 2024. We are living in the biggest history yet. And November 5th is a very, very important day, man. History. You know, not just for, for, for our lifetime, but for... You know, our kids' kids' lifetime and the future, the next generation. Very, very important, man. So we encourage everybody to go out and vote, man. Go out and vote. You know, bring your family, your friends with you. You know, bring 10, 15 people with you. Go out and vote, man. It, and right now, it, and you know, if things are done fair, it's going to be too big to rig, man. Everybody's waking up. You know, everybody sees the corruption. You know, there are tons that are still Trump deranged and there's no coming back. There are tons that are brainwashed. You know, they run with the first thing that they see. They run with the fake news, the fake media, you know, the bias reporting. You know, ton people out there still think Project 2025 is real. You know. But. We're going to continue to spread, spread it, man. Spread the truth, y'all. I love y'all, man. <clears throat> and I'm wishing the best in all you guys' life, man. Bless you all and your families. One love to the human race, man. One love to the human race. But I love y'all. And I will catch you beautiful people in the next one, man. Peace and love, y'all.